What's up YouTube? Welcome back. We're going to do part two here talking about the ban of the wrist brace and we're going to try to explain things just a little bit more. Kind of go over some of these comments that I'm seeing from some of these uh, some of these YouTube comments and some of the Facebook comments. Um, maybe try to just explain, go into a little bit more detail on some things and debunk a couple of theories possibly. You know, Again, just remember all of this is just my theory. It's my opinion. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinion on this thing. I'm just going to tell you how I feel about it. So first things first, um, one of the big, you know, one of the, one of the biggest comments that I keep seeing is stuff like, well, if you get rid of, you know, wrist brace, then you got, you can't let people use knee braces. You can't let people use grip tape. You can't let people use grips and stuff like that. They all enhance your game. I do understand the premise behind that. I understand your thoughts behind that, but I think you're taking it a little bit out of context. Like, a knee brace, for instance, doesn't lock you into a position that betters your technique. That's the main thing, you know, and, and then like grips. Grips are just a comfort thing. They don't create anything else. Some people have a theory, they say that it, re it creates more rev rate. It really doesn't. It actually just gives you more grip. And there's also many different ways to give you grip. Like that lift on the grips is a quarter inch lift, so the flat side. A lot of people use that flat side. and um, they say, well, that's an advantage in itself. Well, no, it's not because really, if you even if you didn't use grips, you could just pitch your finger holes a quarter underneath. You'd have essentially the same thing. You know, just it wouldn't be soft. You wouldn't have that soft feeling. You know, and then like using tape inside the thumb, all you're doing is changing the shape of the thumb. Like it's not an advantage in any way. It doesn't give you automatic better technique. You know, so. Uh, those are things to think about. I had another guy talk about sur LASIK surgery or eyesight. Like, if you have uh, good eyesight, you're in that, you have an automatic advantage. Should we make everybody bolt blind? That, to me, is that doesn't make any sense. I'm not really sure where that was going, but no, that that really doesn't make any sense at all. You know. Now, here's the next big one. Next big one is well, if you're going to get rid of wrist braces, why not get rid of two-handed bowling? The answer to that is really simple. Now again, it's just my opinion, but we're looking at two completely different things here. One is a technique or a style. The other is a device that improves technique and your style. So one, you have to learn to do. The other automatically does it for you. Now here's why I say automatically. They lock your hand in a position, and I wish I kind of had a couple with me to show you, but I'm at home, so we're doing this all right now. It's Sunday, the shop's closed. I'm not driving all the way out to the shop. It's snowing. Sorry, guys. But uh, the one, what people need to understand is not all wrist braces are banned. Okay, so everybody, I got people that are also saying, well, I have a bad wrist, or what about the people who have had surgery, or this and that? You can still use wrist braces. You still are able to use the ones that wrap your wrist and that keep those tenons tight, everything like that. They even have some that go up your arm a little bit higher that don't have metal positioning tools in them. They just wrap in three different spots to give you more stability. It's just like the forearm wraps, you know, they wrap right around to push tight onto those tenons. They're there for protection. They're there for, um, for compression, to help your, help your arm, help your hand, help your wrist, you know. The other ones that are banned are the ones that have the metal that go across the back and you know, they keep your wrist firm and they automatically keep your hand like this. So you can't break it back. You can't go back because that's the common thing that happens. Here, let me show you real quick. Let me get a little bit better view and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so the thing that happens, let me get you a little bit lower here, hold on. One second, there we go. So the thing that happens with the wrist brace is when you're here, okay, the common problem that people have is they break down and they release it from here. With the wrist brace, it automatically improves your technique, your style, and gives you an advantage to be able to repeat that time after time after time without having to use the technique of cup to uncup and doing all that stuff. Or without having the technique of being able to hold the ball up underneath for that split second you need to do it. You know, So that actually forces you to stay here Whereas without, a lot of people's mistake is to go on top and around the ball this way where you're breaking down. And I understand why people use them. Like it makes complete sense as to why people use them, you know, but good coaches should be training these people 
to use them to get them to understand the feeling of what it feels like to keep that wrist up underneath the ball at those times. Then they can recreate it without. Now they say, well, what if somebody's not strong enough? Honestly, it's my belief that rev rate isn't created by strength. Um, and I can show you a lot of different things to prove that, but rev rate is not made by strength. It's made by technique. It's all in your form. It's in the the movement that you make, and it's all a quick movement. Um, and, and really, you're only holding the ball up underneath and cupping it for a fraction of a second before you're actually releasing and uncupping at the bottom of the swing. So um, that's kind of one of my big gripes where I, I hear an awful lot of women say, you know, well, you know, I don't have the strength of the man. I don't have the power of a man. There's a lot of women out there that actually do the right thing. I shouldn't say a lot. There's a few women out there that do the right thing and create an awful lot of power with their hand. Um, and they're not necessarily big, you know, strong type women. You know, like the first one that comes to mind, and she does it well. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but she creates pretty good rev rate with it. But like Aaron McCarthy, anybody that knows Aaron McCarthy, she's a uh, hundred pound, ninety pounds soaking wet, maybe. And I don't, I, I don't mean that in any disrespect. I hope she doesn't take that wrong. Um, I'm actually trying to give her some credit here because she does a lot of really good things. She's got a lot of power for being such a small girl, you know. So anybody that's paid any attention to the PWBA can can see that. You know, you got people like Diana Zavialava. Zavia, did I say that right? Zavialova? I don't know. She does a lot of good things with her hand. Um, needs some improvement. And, and again, I'm not judging anybody. I don't think I'm a complete expert. I think I've got uh, a lot of experience under my hands with coaching and, and everything else that's been going on. So um, keep in mind, I am going to be trying to put together a rev rate clinic especially for this people that want to learn to bowl without wrist braces and stuff and want to learn the proper techniques we're going to put a class together specifically for that so women are invited if you are uh, trying if you're struggling to do the right things with your wrist we're going to put that together and we're going to you know show you the proper techniques and whatnot so um there are some women out there that do the right things you know daria is another one um that that creates a good amount of rev rate um, but again you know and she's probably the best when it comes to getting her hand in the right position you know so again these aren't very like they're not you know masculine women they're not super strong women they have better technique than most you know so uh, we're not even going to get into the argument of anybody that uses them and to try to say anything against them because you know, most women are fairly consistent already um, the wrist braces just help them to create just that little bit more, you know, so is it really an advantage? Um, when it when you get to a certain level, no, you know, that's why you don't you don't see anybody on tour using them on the guys tour This rule isn't gonna affect anybody on the PBA 50 tour. It's not gonna affect anybody at the regional tour um, It's just the national tour that you're not allowed to use these and I think that's a good thing And here's the reason why I think it's a good thing um, a for integrity B, because it makes the kids, the people, the aspiring young folk, or anybody really, who's trying to get to the level of bowling on tour, um, it makes you adapt and learn right away, learning fundamentals and technique with the release early on to where you can create these types of motions, these fundamentals, before you even make that jump. You know, So it, it teaches people to, to create these fundamentals early and not get stuck into a wrist brace and feel and use it as a crutch their entire career. Um, so, again, I have to reiterate, I'm not, this is, this means no, no ill will towards anybody that uses them. Uh, I have, I, honestly, I mean, I could care less. Uh, if you use them, I think, um, the, the reason I don't like them is because it can take a, a not a, an under average release and make it an average release but it can't make an average release an elite release or a good Ill release so that's where the disadvantage is you know it's just like i said before with the belly putter and stuff you know it's just the technique the anchoring of it and doing all those things causes the problems it takes away from the skill set uh, of learning the fundamentals of doing things what what we would say properly you know so um, 
And again, you guys can talk about two-handed bowling and saying that's an unfair advantage, but that again, that's a technique. You know, it's a skill set. It's not necessarily, you know, it's not a device. It's not something you're putting on your body to make things make make you have better technique. That's just the way I feel about it. You know, so um, let me see if there's. I know there was a couple of YouTube comments I wanted to kind of go over, so let me let me see if I can't scroll back and try and find those. All right, so I found one here that I want to read to you because it's actually really long, um, so we'll go through it a little bit. But it says, my opinion of this decision, dumb. Is the PBA trying to take away what they consider an unfair advantage that some players have by using a wrist support? Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it an unfair advantage. I, ca I call it more an integrity thing, um, making sure we're not using devices to improve technique or skill set. Um, First, they took away balance holes and now wrist supports. Now, the balance hole thing, anybody that knows me knows I was in support of removing the balance holes because uh, it holds pro shops more accountable. Now, you got to be a little bit better with your layouts and making sure you're doing the right thing for the bowlers. You can't just put three holes in it, and then if they don't like it, put a fourth hole in it just to try to make it better. That's that's my opinion on it. That's the, the short version of it. Uh, it is stupid, honestly. The only people being hurt both of these rules are the low rev players who benefited from both balance holes and wrist supports that allowed them to compete with high rev bowlers. It is the PBA only interested in seeing high rev bowlers in their tournaments now and on TV? I can't say that they are, um, but I can tell you that it's more entertaining to watch those guys than it is to watch, you know, a low rev, 150 rev person. You know, um, at, there's times when watching. Precision and accuracy is fun, but we don't see those types of conditions very often anymore. Now it's more so about being able to create as much room for error as possible. If the PBA is so concerned with leveling the playing field and letting only skill determine who wins tournaments, then why the need to do this is simple. Ban reactive resin balls. Ban urethane balls. Ban dynamic cores in balls. Now those three things... Um, I can understand the premise behind thinking that because those are technically devices that, if used properly, can better your game. I can see that, and there's been a big discussion on, you know, going back to bowling balls that only have certain diffs and certain RGs and not allowing certain style cores and, you know, blah, 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 all that good stuff. So I'm not going to discredit that completely. Um, I'm not saying that's what we should do, but I understand the premise behind it. Only allow rubber and plastic balls with pancake weight blocks. Only allow a simple label layout on all balls. Bowlers can alter surface and that's, that is all. Then the players with the greatest skill, consistency, and accuracy would dominate the game. If they are not willing to do this, then stop making hypocritical and idiotic decisions. Now see... Um, I think by doing all that, all you're going to do is you're going to make the two-handers and the more powerful players dominate that much more. I mean, people who already have better fundamentals are going to win that much more. You know, so that actually doesn't level the playing field. That makes it more of an unfair advantage for those who have high rev rate already. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. And so I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't necessarily call it an unfair advantage. I just I look at it as an integrity thing to where you shouldn't be using a device to better your technique. You need to get your t technique better um, without devices. It's the same like in golf. Jeez. They don't let you use all these things that, you know, those things that hang from your hat and, you know, these lining, these adjustments and lining up thing. I mean, they just don't let you use any of that stuff at the elite level. You want to use it in recreation and all that, which is why I'm saying I, I don't think anybody's going to, the USBC is not going to adopt this rule, I don't think. Um, I think they should adopt it for the PWBA, but because it's the elite level, I don't think they will because they have a lot of ladies that use them and they've just grown up using them and that's all they've really known. Um, and again, no shade, nothing, nothing against them. You know, a lot of really good bowlers use those things. So, um, don't want to take anything away from them, but I do think that a step in the right direction for integrity was getting rid of this rule or getting this rule in place. So, um, other than that, that's all I got. If you got any more comments or anything, leave them below. Let me know what you think. Uh, until next time, I'm out of here. See y'all later.